Hi, and welcome to a quick demonstration of the cloud.com cloud stack console. What we're going to look at today is how users interface with the powerful architecture that exists inside of the cloud stack. You know, when, when you think of the, the cloud, you really think a lot about how easy it is to provision virtual machines and virtual environments, and, and that's what we're going to talk about today. So as a, as a user in this environment, I'm just going to log in and take a look at, um, at my own virtual data center. And the virtual data center is so really, it's a couple things. It's, it's my virtual machines running on my own private virtual network behind my own virtual firewall so that I can, you know, I can really manage this environment. I can manage the, the machines that I have running, the disks I've got attached to those machines, the network that's running them, and, and all of my, you know, important features like uh, firewall rules and, and load balancing. So you can see the first thing you see as a user, you come in, you've got a dashboard to see, you know, the number of VMs you have running and, uh, you know, and how many IP addresses you're using and how much bandwidth you're consuming and, and any information that's important to you about what the uh, performance is like in your environment. But most of your time is going to be spent in the, you know, in the instances and the storage and the networking tab where you're actually interfacing with these virtual machines. So you can see here, I've got a pretty small little uh, environment running in the cloud. I've got two virtual machines. They're both CentOS machines. Um, I've got them set up now and um, what you can see right off the bat is that these machines are running. They're, they're up and, and running and they're, they're both in the same availability zone. And An availability zone is, is really a data center. It's an, an environment that I've decided to provision this virtual machines into. And at any point I can add more VMs. So I can come in and say I'd like to create a new VM. And when I go to create a new VM, the first option I'm going to have is to pick a template. Now, generally, you're going to have a lot of different software options to pick from, Windows, Linux, um, you know, all sorts of different varieties, some with applications built in. Uh, in this case, I've just uploaded one example, a CentOS template, um, to the cloud to make as a public template, one that's available to everyone who's got an account in the cloud. I also have the ability to upload my own templates, things that I've created maybe on my desktop that I want to now run out in my company's private cloud or on a service provider's cloud. So I can upload those or even create a blank template from you know, an ISO, such as Ubuntu. But in this case, I'm just going to create another CentOS instance. And when I go to do that, I'm able to pick from some service offerings and disk offerings that are made available to me by the cloud operator. And this could be you know, um, really any kind of combination of CPU and memory that defines the virtual machine's uh, capacity, as well as the size of the disk I want to attach to that. So I'm just going to start with a small instance, and let's have a, a medium disk. Finally, I'm going to pick the data center I want this to run in. And in this case, I've just got a small cloud that has one data center, so we'll have it run in zone one. And I will give the system a name. We'll call it Web Server 3. And we'll put it into my test VMs group. That's it. Now, I'm just final review, make sure this is everything I wanted. And then I'll s tell the system to go about provisioning me that first virtual machine that I just created. So the uh, when I go to provision this, one of the things that's happening in the background is it's reaching out to my virtual router and asking for an IP address. So the virtual router that I've already had um, allocated when I first created my account is working to make mount this virtual machine onto the network, give it a, an IP address, and make it available for me to start using. So here's my new server. It's, uh, it's a web server. It's got an IP address as I requested. It's in, in the data center I requested. It's the CentOS instance like I picked and I can start to take some actions on this. For example, I can stop it if I wanted to. I can reboot it or destroy it. I can also attach or detach an ISO that I've uploaded into the cloud, maybe with some software I want to install. I can change the name of the group or um, if I want to I can enable HA on this machine. Enabling HA tells the management server um, to reach out and make sure that it monitors the heartbeat of this virtual machine and if something happens either to the virtual machine itself or to the network to go in and actually uh, restart this machine, to restart on a new piece of hardware. So in addition to doing things like monitoring the VMs and, and making sure they're available, the management server is also where I go to, um, you know, to, to do things like attach additional volumes and attach additional storage to my machine. So for instance, if I, you see I can click here and see the actual disks that are attached. Let's, let's imagine that I want to create another disk and attach it to my virtual machine. I can reach up here to the storage server um, and I will go in and say I'd like to add a volume. And adding a volume is pretty straightforward. I can come in and say, okay, I'm going to call this volume my, um, my, uh, my web server backup. I can pick the data center I want to deploy it into, and I can pick how big of a disk I want to deploy. 
and it's going to reach out and, and provision me some of the storage that I've attached to this cloud already um, as the service provider, as the, as the operator of the cloud. So here's my web server backup, and once I have this machine, I can come in and attach it to whichever virtual machine I want in the cloud. So I'm going to attach it to the VM that I just created, and once I do that, it will be available to me in the uh, in the operating system. So if I come back here to my instances, you can see now here's Web Server 3. That's the new instance I just created. And here's my Web Server backup disk. And it's available. It's ready for me to start writing disk data to. And at any point in the future, I can detach this and reattach it to another machine and transfer that data back and forth. In addition to managing the uh, and it, you know the, the actual data on your machines, these disk volumes and the storage are also how you back up your environment. So if you think of an environment uh, that you want to back up, you can do a couple things. You can, you can take a snapshot of it and take a one-time snapshot where you tell the system to automatically take whatever the current state of that machine is and save it and save it to a secondary storage location. Or you can schedule recurring snapshots where you come in and say, okay, I'd like to take hourly snapshots and I'd, I'd like to have these happen every hour at you know 15 minutes past the hour and I'd like to keep you know 24 of these. And so all day long I'm going to be taking automatic snapshots and giving my system the ability to roll back to a previous point. Um, I can also schedule them on a weekly or a daily basis or even a monthly basis so I can keep a history of my environments and roll back if I ever have problems. So scheduling things like you know backups or even taking these environments and turning them into my own private templates so I can clone them and, and copy multiple instances of them is, is really straightforward. And finally as a user I'm going to want to manage my own network. So I've got these virtual machines, they're running on a VLAN, um, they all have private IP addresses, but I've also got a public IP address which is attached to my virtual router. If I want to, I can request additional IP addresses and you know the system will automatically allocate these to me. And once I have them, I can come in and create things like firewall rules and you know allow traffic to you know, be forwarded from my public IP addresses to my private IP addresses. So in, for instance, if I wanted to create an HTTP firewall rule, I could come in and say that I'd like to have port 80 traffic that comes in on my public IP address forwarded to, you know, port 8080 on the private IP address. So once I create that rule, I just come over and add the actual rule where I say, okay, here's what I'm going to be forwarding and here's the protocol I'm using. And I can add multiple rules. So if at the same time, if I also wanted to add a rule that said maybe my port 22 traffic for SSH will be allowed to come through, I can add that there. And I've created now a general HTTP security group that I can then go back to the different instances in my cloud and apply it. So if you come back here to Actions, you'll see one of the options is Apply Security Group. And applying a security group allows me to pick an IP address, pick a security group, apply it to the system, and basically tell the virtual firewall to allow traffic in that's coming into that IP address and be sure to forward it to the right virtual machine. That's a quick look at how you can create an environment in the cloud um, using the cloud.com cloud stack to provision virtual machines, manage your virtual disks, and configure your virtual network. Thanks for your time.